everyone. In this video, I will show you how to use Ztable and Ttable to find critical values and p-values. Let's see the hypothesis first. When ha is smaller than, either mu smaller than or p smaller than, then the rejection region, which is alpha, is on the left. And alpha usually is given. The most common alpha will be 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and 0 0.1. And when HA is mu or P bigger than, then the rejection region will be on the right. And when HA is not equal, then the rejection region will be two side. And the cutoff, the cutoff we call critical value. So we need to find out the critical value so that we can make a decision. If the test statistic in the rejection region, we reject H0. If the test statistic is not in the rejection region, we do not reject H0. So let's see case 1 and case 3 first. For case 1, the large sample mean when small, the sample size is bigger or equal to 30. Or the case 3, large proportion problem. And both of them we use Z-table. So I will show you how to use Z-table to find out the critical values. So I will show you as an example when alpha is 0 0.1. So HA is smaller than. Then we will show the curve and highlight the area. So the middle is 0. Smaller than, the rejection region will be on the left. So this is alpha, the rejection region. And we need to find out what's the cutoff. Alpha is 0 0.1. So this area is 0 0.1. And this area is the table value in our Z table. So this area is 0 0.4. And you need to use the Z table to find out the critical value. So according to the table value 0 0.4, the number here is 1.28. That's the z-score. And from the picture, it can tell you the number here. It should be a negative number. So put a negative number here. So this is the critical value. And this area is rejection region. So for example, if your test statistic is somewhere here, which is outside the rejection region. So our decision is do not reject H0. For another example, if your test statistic is somewhere here, it's in the rejection region, so our decision is reject H0. And when alpha is 0 0.1, and your hypothesis HA is bigger than, so let's draw the curve again. and the middle will be zero. So bigger than, the rejection region will be on the right. So this area is alpha, which is the rejection region. And this area is 0 0.1. So you need to find out this area, which is the table value. So this area is 0 0.4. And using the Z table, you can find out the critical value, the according Z score is 1.28. So if you have a number somewhere here, for example, 3 is bigger than 1.28, it's in the rejection region, so our decision is reject H0. If you have a test statistic is here, it's outside the rejection region, so our decision is do not reject H0.
for the case H A is not equal to. So we'll also draw the curve. Not equal to, then the rejection region will be on both sides. So this area and this area together is zero point one. So each side is zero point zero five, zero point zero five, and both of them are the rejection region. So you need to find out. What this area will be? This is the table value, so it will be zero point four five. And using the z table, inside of the table is zero point four five. You need to find out which row and which column is the corresponding z score. And we can find out we have two numbers, one point six four and one point six five. Is according to this table value, so we can take an average, or you can use one of them. So this number it will be one point six four or six five, or take an average. Let's take an average. So and this, it will be negative one point six four five. Now, if you have a test statistic, for example, zero point five is somewhere here. So it's not in the rejection region. Our decision is not reject H zero. And if you have a test statistic, let's see, two is somewhere here. It's in the rejection region. So our decision is reject H zero. And similarly, if you have a test statistic, let's see, negative three is somewhere here. So it is in the rejection region. Our decision is reject H zero. Now here is a summary of the rejection region and the corresponding critical values. So please download this file on Canvas so you can use it in the future to find out the critical value. For example, so this lower tail is smaller than, and this column is upper tail bigger than, and this column is not equal. So, for example, if your hypothesis is not equal case, so you need to look at this column. And when alpha is zero point zero five, so when alpha is zero point zero five, so the crossing, so negative one point nine six and one point nine six is the critical value. Another example. So when your hypothesis is smaller than. So you need to look at this column, and when alpha is zero point zero one, so this zero point zero one, so the critical value is negative two point three three, which means this point is negative two point three three. So that you can make a decision. So please download this file on Canvas so you can use it using Z table to find out critical values. Now let's see the p-value. So p-value, the probability in the tail associated with the test statistics. So p-value is a probability. Probability it is an area, and the area cut off the starting line, the starting point is the test statistic. So let's see one by one. Smaller than, smaller than. It will be on the left side, and the starting point is the test statistic. As we know, the test statistic is from a sample, so the result may be positive, may be negative. So no matter what the test statistic is, positive or negative, starting from that number, highlight everything on the left. So, for example, if the test statistic is somewhere here, and starting from here, put a line and highlight everything on the left. So this will be. So this point is test statistic. So this will be p-value. 
And remember, in chapter five, we figure out this area it will equals to so the p value this area equals to zero point five minus the table value according to the number of the test statistic as a z score. And if your test statistic from the formula in case one or case three. You can calculate the test statistic, and if your test statistic is somewhere here, it's a positive number. So starting from this point, put a line and highlight everything on the left. So that is the p-value, and this number is the test statistic. So from chapter five, we know this area, the p value, it will be zero point five plus the table value. And similarly, so this is the summary. No matter what the test statistic is, from left, everything on the left. So it is positive or negative, starting from that point, and highlight everything on the left. So let's see bigger there. Bigger than. So no matter what the test statistic is, starting from that point, highlight everything on the right. So if your test statistic is here. And highlight everything on the right. So this is p value. And as we know, this area will equals to zero point five minus the table value. And if the test statistic is a negative result. So the middle is zero. If your test statistic is here, a negative number. So put a line here and highlight everything on the right because your H A is bigger than. So this area is p value, and this area, the p value, the probability, it will be point five plus the table value. So in summary, no matter what is your test statistic is, put a line starting from that number, highlight everything on the right, and you will tell from the picture itself tells you point five plus or point five minus. The last case, not equal to. So not equal to, then it will be two side. So no matter what's your test statistic, if it's here symmetrically, if it's here symmetric to a data site, and pull a line. So this is test statistic, or this is test statistic. So pull a line studying, and it will be two side. So all together is called p value. These two area together, so the p value it equals to so this area, this area it will equals to zero point five minus the table value according to that number, and because we have two side two same area, so time two, and remember if. The hypothesis H A is not equal. Remember to time two for the p value, and after that make a decision. How to make a decision? The p value if it's smaller than alpha, alpha usually is given. 
0.05 or 0.1. If p-value smaller than alpha, our decision is reject H0. If p-value is bigger than alpha, do not reject H0, or sometimes we say accept H0. Okay, case two. How to use t-table to find out critical values and p-values. And because the sample size is smaller than 30, so we need to use t-table instead. First, let's see finding the critical values. So the critical value actually based on alpha, the rejection region. So in the t-table, let's look at the top. So top, top two rows, you will see this one tail and two tail. So both of them are alpha. And you need to decide the case is one tail or two tail. So if your hypothesis H0 equal HA is smaller than, so this is a one tail problem. You need to pick the one tail alpha. Either 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01. If H0 is equal, HA is bigger. This is also one tail problem. So you need to also look at this row, one tail, to pick up 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01. So both of them are one tail problem. If your hypothesis H0 equal, HA is not equal. So this is two tail problem. And you need to look at other row. Look at this row instead. So pick up 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01. So there's three columns. That is the two-tail problem. So let me show you some examples. Smaller than. Smaller than, then the picture, actually, it will be on the left. So this is the critical value so this area is alpha the rejection region so how to find the critical value what this number will be first it is one tail problem because it's smaller than so it will be one tail problem and alpha is given is 0 0.01 0 0.01 one tail so you need to look at this column and n is 15 so the degree of freedom is n minus 1 it will be 14 so the crossing is here two point which means this number is 2.625 uh, 4 and because the picture already tell you is a negative number so it's negative 2.624 so if the test statistic is somewhere here for example negative 1 is outside the rejection region so our decision is not reject H0 if the test statistic based on the formula, the result is, for example, negative 5. So it should be somewhere here in the rejection region. So our decision is reject H0. Let's see one more. Bigger than. So bigger than, if you highlight the area, it will be on the right. So on the right, this is alpha rejection region and this is the critical value we need to find out what's this number first the hypothesis HA is bigger than so we need to look at one tail alpha is 0 0.05 here 
So we need to look at this row. And n is 21. So the degree of freedom is n minus 1. It will be 20. And the crossing is the critical value. So the crossing is 1.725. And starting from 1.725 on the right is the rejection region. If you test the statistic based on the formula, for example, it's somewhere here. For example, 0 0.5 is outside the rejection region. So our decision is not reject H0. If the test statistic is somewhere here, for example, 2.5 is inside the rejection region. So our decision is reject H0. Not equal case. So not equal case, it will be two side. So both of them together is the rejection region. And we need to find out what's this number and what's this number, the critical value. So not equal case, it will be two-tail problem. And for this example, alpha is 0 0.1. So we need to look at this row instead, two tails, 0 0.1. So we look at this column. And degree of freedom is 24 minus 1. So it will be 23. And this, the crossing, it will be the critical value. So this number is 1.714. This number will be negative 1.714. And after the calculation of the test statistic, if, for example, the test statistic is somewhere here, for example, 0.4, it is outside the rejection region. So our decision is not to reject H0. If your test statistic is somewhere here, for example, 3 is in the rejection region, our decision is reject H0. If your test statistics, for example, is somewhere here, for example, negative 2 inside the rejection region, so our decision is reject H0. Now I will show you how to use the Z ta uh, T table, sorry, T table to find out the p values. So p values for H A smaller or bigger than, we need to look at the one tail. So p value is associated with the test statistic. If it's smaller than, it will be starting from the test statistic. So this is p-value. If HA is bigger than, so the test statistic, it will highlight the area on the right p-value. So we need to find out what this area will be. Now let me show you how to use the t-table to find out the p-values. So we need to look at the degree of freedom. So we need to look at the row. Row is degree of freedom, which is m minus 1. So the test statistic is here. And we need to find out the two neighbors. Because most of the time, the test statistic, the number, is not in the t-table. You have not to have the exact result. So if it's not, then we find the two neighbors. And the two neighbors go up, go up to these two rows. So the range will be the p-value. So p-value in t-table, it will be a range. And not equal. So look at the degree of freedom, which is n minus 1 
and the test statistic is between which two neighbors? And the two neighbors go up, go up to the top two rows, and the result will be the p-value. And we need to use two tail. Pick the two tails. So let's see some examples. Okay, this is smaller than one tail problem, and degree of freedom is n minus one, so it will be nineteen. And we only look at the row nineteen. And the test statistic is two point negative two point three two because it's symmetric, so we can use two point three two. 2.32, and look at the row 19. Actually, we don't have exactly 2.32. So we find the two neighbors. 2.32 is between this number and this number. So the two neighbors is 2.093 and 2.539. So these two numbers go up and go up. That will be the p-value range. So you need to pick one of them, one tail or two tail. So this question is one tail problem. So you need to pick the one tail result. So the p-value, it will be between 0 0.025 and 0 0.01. So p value will equals to so usually we put the smaller one in front zero point zero one and the bigger in after zero point zero two five and we compare to alpha so alpha is zero point zero one so all the range all together actually bigger than zero point zero one which is alpha so p value bigger than alpha our decision is not reject H0. So bigger than. Again, we need to look at the degree of freedom. So degree of freedom will be 12. Only look the row 12. And the test statistic is calculated as 1.09. So in row 12, we don't have exactly 1.09. So we find the two neighbors. Higher than which number? Lower than which number? So this is the two neighbors. 1.083 and 1.356. So the p-value is these two neighbors go up and go up. So this will be the p-value range. And you need to pick one tail or two tail. So this is bigger than, so it's one tail again. So we need to pick this two. So the p-value range, it will be 0 0.15 and 0 0.1 according to. So we can write down the p-value. So p-value, it will be a range from the smaller one is 0.1 and 0.15. And after that, compare to alpha. So the whole range bigger than alpha, 0 0.05. So our decision is not reject H0. Lastly, let's see the two-tail problem. Again, we need to look at the row degree of freedom. So degree of freedom is 14. Sample size is 15, so minus 1. And the test statistic is calculate is 1.78. So we need to look at the row 14 and find out the two neighbors. 1.78 is between this number and this number. So it's between 1.761 and 2.145. So these two numbers go up and go up. So 
This will be the p-value range, and you need to pick one of them. So go up and go up, and because it's not equal to, so it will be two tail problem. So you need to find the two tail. So it will be between 0 0.10 and 0 0.05. So p-value, it will be a range 0 0.05, the smaller one, and to 0 0.1. And compare to alpha. Alpha is 0 0.1, so the whole range actually smaller than 0 0.10. So our decision is reject H0. So remember, when you use Z-table to find out p-value, if it's two-tail problem, you time two, right? So here, the two-tail. So the first row and second row. So actually, you can compare the two-tail in the T-table. They already time two. For example, 1.0 is 0 0.5 time two. So the table already time two for you. So you need to only pick up one tail or two tail range. So that's all for this video.